Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to play with some pastels and make a little um, cloud scene with a moon kind of peeking out behind the clouds. I'm using one of the Color Cube cards for inspiration. I'll link to that system if you're curious about that. It's really, um, I really like that for either I want some color inspiration or I want a reference photo that I can use. Uh, I'm gonna start off with this kind of aqua blue color, kind of like a light sky blue, and I am blocking in around the large cloud mass shape. I'm using Artix Pastels. It's a set of 48 soft pastels and I do have a review on this set on my YouTube channel if it's a set of pastels you're thinking about picking up. Since I didn't have exactly the color I needed for the sky, I'm overlapping some um, kind of a seafoam green color on top and I'll be blending those two together. When you're dealing with a limited palette of supplies, you'll often have to layer up and blend together to get a color that you want in pastel. It's not a big deal. Uh, the only thing is you will have to mix and sometimes that does make you lose a little bit of the freshness of the color. Some other uh, struggle that I had with this particular set in this piece is that I didn't have exactly um, the right pinks and my white wasn't super opaque. So I do have to go in and grab a white from another set uh, to get some of those final details towards the end. But here I'm just blending in this background. The paper I'm working on, I'm working on a half sheet of the Canson XL Dry Mix Media Paper, the Sand Grain Finish. So it's kind of like a um, a pebbly type of texture. The uh, It's not really, it doesn't feel like sandpaper. Um, it feels definitely more of like a, just a textured pebbly type of um, type of texture. It doesn't take as many layers as sanded paper will, but it is um, it is really nice for uh, color pencils and pastels. I actually really like it for oil pastels. It's really nice for that. But um, it's an affordable paper. You get about 40 sheets for around um, oh, six or eight bucks, depending on the size of the pad you're buying. It comes in 9 by 12 or 11 by 14. This is the natural finish, and it also comes in gray. I will will recommend you check this out at Blick Art Materials versus Amazon because Amazon, it is like, you know, six bucks at Blick and like 20 bucks on Amazon. So um, definitely, definitely shop around because, you know, you could pay uh, a little or a lot for it. And I would always recommend you get a better price. Um, here I'm going in with a white pastel, the one that came in the Arctic set, and I am putting in some of the edges of the clouds. Now some of the clouds are quite wispy and translucent, so this pastel will be great for those like this um, little cloud here on the right hand side, it's just more wispy. So using that more translucent pastel is going to work. I found the Arctic pastels to be a bit on the hard side and some of the colors to be a bit translucent, like the the, uh, the peaches and the white was a, a little translucent. And uh, really that's not what you want in a really pastel color. You want that to be opaque typically. Um, so just to give you the heads up on that. And I am putting in some of these really uh, kind of darker clouds that are gonna be um, just more in shadow on the bottom. I'm adding that into the white because I know I'm gonna add some more like navy tones over that to blend in. So it's just basically giving me a base layer that I can work onto. Generally, I wait till the end to put white, but since this is not a very opaque white, I don't have to worry about it overtaking other colors that I'm gonna layer on top. And I do need to have something to kind of mix into so that the uh, darker colors I put down don't get too dark. Like I said, this is a limited palette. So um, I don't have every tone I would maybe want to use. So if like you had more colors, you don't have to do so much mixing and blending and you can just kind of let the strokes either blend each other out a little bit or just kind of lay them down next to each other and have more of a um, impressionistic effect where more of the strokes are visible and there's less blending. But um, I mean, we all start with limited supplies. When you're starting a new, a new medium, you're generally not having hundreds of colors. Uh, so it's really important that you learn how to do or learn how to get the most out of a smaller set when you're a beginner. I'm keeping this real time. This was a very quick sketch, took me about 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, you can work pretty quickly in pastels. I think that's a, that's a really nice thing about the medium is that if you're limited in time, you can work very quickly. You do wanna make sure you have a space where you can, uh, you know, leave stuff set out. Otherwise you're gonna spend most of your time just setting up and cleaning up. I wanted to let you know that before I grabbed this coral pink pastel, I did tap off any like um, dust that was on the surface of my painting just right over my trash can. So that's a really handy to do every once in a while. Um, just have a big trash can next to you, just tap your, your board over it. Um, I prefer that than blowing the dust off because it contains the mess and also you don't risk getting that stuff in the air as much and breathing it in. 
And I'm also gonna wipe off my pastel as I go because I don't wanna take that, I don't wanna transfer that blue into my white clouds. So just have a rag handy that you can use for that. Um, but yeah, you just want to avoid making mud as much as possible. So especially when you're working with really delicate colors here, you've got a coral pink and you've got a teal bluish green color. Those colors would be opposite each other on the color wheel. And so they're going to make mud if you let them overlap and mix together too much. So um, just little, little tricks like that, that you might not necessarily know to do as a beginner are really helpful in keeping your work from getting too muddy. Now I knew I needed some brighter, like kind of pinkish red in this scene, but I didn't have just the right color. So I'm actually going in with this really vibrant, it's almost like a, like a vermilion red. And I'm adding that to like right over the coral pink area that needed that extra boost of color. And then I'll tap them together with my fingers later. So I also felt like I needed a little bit cooler of a pink, so I'm adding in some of this kind of alizarin crimson color just to help cool down some of the more warm pinks. Um, that might be a little bit of a more advanced um, color theory there, but just kind of think of if you need to push a color, how do you need to push it? Do you need to make it more saturated, then go with a darker, more rich color? Uh, does it need to be like, if I need something to be less orangey, I'm going to go with more of a pinky red. If I need something to be more orangey, I'm going to go with a more coral red. Um, look, if you don't have the color that you need, just kind of ask yourself, okay, what is this color leaning towards? Where can I, where can I go to get a similar color without making it muddy. And that's really what you want to avoid when you're doing pastel or any other medium that doesn't dry is you want to avoid mud. You can set this pastel aside and come work on it in two weeks and that layer of pastel underneath is still gonna be activated. You know, you're still gonna be able to move that around and brush it unless you put a fixative on it. Here I'm adding a little bit of yellow. I'm using a golden yellow, uh, a yellow leaning more towards orange because I don't want it to turn green. So if I use like a bright lemon yellow on top of that blue sky, I'm gonna end up with green. So by using the golden color, it's gonna be warmer, it's gonna look more like sunlight and it's gonna be less prone to turning green on me because it's just further away from green on the color wheel. Um, you will, I, it doesn't hurt to study the color wheel, but I honestly think that you're going to learn more about color theory just by painting and mixing your colors and experimenting. And you'll see what works and what doesn't. You'll see that, oh, that went green. That's not what I wanted to do. Or, oh, that went purple. That is what I wanted to do. Or, you know, you'll, you'll just pick up so much of that stuff just by experimenting. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have a color wheel to, um, to refer to and kind of see how the colors, um, you know, how they work around the wheel and what colors are next to each other. The an uh, um, analogous colors that are color friends, they blend well together. You've got the ones that are far away from each other on the color wheel. Those colors, when blended together, make mud. Um, you know, you just kind of get used to that the more you the more you observe and the more you paint. Here I'm using this kind of like a navy, it's almost like a, um, it's almost like a, a gray navy teal color. And I'm using that to get some of the darks in the sky that I need. You got to be bold sometimes. Don't be afraid of your darks um, because you need that contrast for especially a very simple scene like this to have a little bit of oomph and um, you just gotta you just gotta do it. That's why like using an inexpensive paper. I know a lot of artists are like buy the best you can afford you know but if you're gonna you're gonna burn through a lot of paper when you're learning a new medium and if you're afraid of wasting precious paper then um, it's not gonna make you want to create you know you're gonna feel bad from the waste so there are good quality materials that can be had for less expensive prices and that's what I try to bring you on my channel those those recommendations I know there's a lot of controversy about that where um, you know, a lot of instructors will say, no, buy the best, use professional quality products only. But um, I'm never going to, I'm never going to recommend that for everyone because, you know, if your budget is small and you've just blown it on a bun on a few sheets of really precious paper, and you're going to be afraid to use it. So, you know, you got to do what's right for you. Also, if you're someone that um, will never trust a cheaper material and you get the money to spend on the more expensive materials, and that's where you feel like you want to spend your money and that's what makes you feel confident makes you want to create then go ahead and do that it's not a one size fits all for everybody of course they're probably not watching my channel but um but yeah somebody with the same skills using twenty dollar sheet paper versus this you know um i don't know 25 cent a sheet paper yeah with identical identical skill levels you will, it will be a mar it will be a little bit better with the more expensive materials. Yeah, it's just, it's gonna, you're gonna be seeing that quality. It's just like a beginner seamstress and advanced seamstress, uh, or, or two beginner seamstresses, one using really high quality material and one losing low quality, quality material. Yes, the high quality stuff is gonna look better just because it's higher quality. But 
if you have a decent inexpensive material versus a really high quality, very expensive material in the hands of a beginner, I think that there's not going to be as much of a difference as you might think. So, you know, find the good, the decent stuff um, that's affordable to practice with and, you know, get some miles under your belt and then go and splurge, you know. And I would say, actually, if you're going to get a set like this, an uh, inexpensive set of pastels, buy an expensive white and an expensive black, like from Schmincke or Sennelier. Just getting those two colors, the white and the black, in a better quality, that's going to give you a huge boost as far as what you can do with the material. I'm not saying go to the dollar store and buy the cheapest pastels you can find. No, that's going to be frustrating. There's definitely a point where the materials are going to frustrate you and inhibit you. But if you find a decent quality product, um, splurge on a couple colors of the really expensive ones where it counts, uh, you're going to, you know, you're going to really have the best of both worlds and you're not going to be afraid to experiment. Uh, here I am trying to build up a little bit more of those white clouds using my cheaper white pastel that was in this set. And you're going to see there is a limit that I can do with this white pastel. And that's where we're going to bring in a Schmincke white pastel at the end. And you're going to see the difference in quality there. Um, but do I need it for all the colors that I'm using? No, I don't. I don't, honestly. Um, I don't think this would be that much different if I had painted it with the exact same colors in a more expensive brand to be honest. If I had all my pastel trays out and I could pick the perfect shade of every single color, yeah, it would be a little bit better. But um, I've been using pastels for a long time. In in a beginner's hand, it might not be because it may be overwhelming because you have so many colors and it might actually be, you might be more prone to making mud. So I just, I just get really frustrated when I hear people say to only use professional grade supplies when you're learning because it doesn't always make uh, that positive of a difference. And in fact, it can make a, you know, a negative difference, I think. Um, but anyways, just, just get something decent, you know, uh, there are cheaper pastels. It'll give you just as good of a result in your painting as well. There's a lot of these, the square ones that are made by Mungio. I'm trying to think, um, Sergeant Art had a set that I really love teaching with. Uh, it was a set of 48 full stick pastels. I think it cost like $14. And, um, it was just, it was really great. You could definitely paint, a painting equivalent to these pastels and the pastels cost like a third of the price. The difference being that um, who knows what the pigments are used in those pastels. They're probably going to fade on you. Um, if you're worried about that, then go for these that have the pigment information. If you're not worried about it, go for the Sergeant Art ones because they performed really well and you could do the exact same work. It just might fade on you. So it just depends on what your goals are. If your goals are to learn, um, and to express yourself and you don't really care about the longevity, yeah, you can definitely use the cheaper stuff. Um, performance isn't always indicative of quality, which is which is kind of kind of funny to say, but there are some really cheap materials that can give you really good results. They just will you'll be giving up something in the terms of like light fastness or um, you know archivability of the of the painting. But as far as learning, those are great things to learn on because you probably don't want to keep these fledgling first pieces forever. Now here I am going in with the Schmincke pastel. Um, I've got a white here. It's much more potent. I'm putting the little moon in there. You'll see when my hand moves out of the way, just that little bit of a crescent. I wouldn't be able to do that with the Artix white pastel because it's just not soft enough and it won't lay down on top of these other colors, but I'm able to get that little crisp glow with the Schmincke white. So yeah, it's going to cost probably, you know, six or eight bucks for that pastel but you're not going to use that much of it. You're only going to bring it in on the tail end of your paintings when you want those super bright highlights, but it's worth it. It's, it's worth it to kind of get more out of your cheaper supplies, in my opinion. Uh, if you have an art supply store where you can buy individual pastels, that's great. Oftentimes, if you're ordering online, you have to order a multiple of a certain amount to be able to, you know, you can't just order one pastel. You have to order usually assorted, but you have to get like three or five or something like that, just because they're kind of expensive to ship and to package and stuff. So, um, you know, just kind of get an idea of what you need in a higher quality material and order it all at once. And now the best part, I'm tapping off the dust and taking off my uh, tape from the painting so we can see how it came out. And uh, I always love to have the frame. For one thing, it's really nice to do with pastel because, um, it gives you a place to handle the painting so you don't get pastels all over your finger fingers when you're, um, you know, when you're handling the painting that's finished. You could even do a wider, um, a wider border if you wanted to. And um, when you go to frame it, it gives you an area to kind of hide behind the mat and um, 
yeah, I think it's I think it's just kind of a nice a nice thing to do. This um, Canson XL dry mixed media paper is very resilient to tape. I don't have to like use a special tape or anything. But if you're using a Canson Mitants or other more fragile papers, I recommend you take either use a really low tack tape or you take your masking tape and stick it to your clothing, like your jeans, your sweater or whatever, to destickify it a bit. It picks up some lint, so it's a little less sticky. And then uh, that way it will release from your paper. Now here I realized that my values need a little adjustment. I'm going to add some um, of that dark kind of navy teal color into the shadows a bit. Make the uh, moon pop a bit and make um, the, the clouds pop a little bit. I didn't really, wasn't sure I needed it till I saw the white borders. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I could use a little bit more contrast there. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. And um, yeah, now if I was to spray fixative on it at this point, it would darken up my clouds and I would need to go put more white on top. Um, so and, and it would darken everything. So just be aware of that. I'm not gonna fix this. I'll wrap it in glassine and call it a day. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it inspires you to pick up some pastels and give it a try. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. And until next time, happy crafting.